thank you for listening to the latest episode of Capital Conflab. From rugby and football to corfball and kabaddi, we are here to take you through the very best of sport the wonderful city of Cardiff has to offer. So sit back, turn up the volume, and let us take you through the next half an hour here on Capital Conflab. Well, thank you for listening to Capital Conflab. We've uh, we've had an exciting week. We've uh, moved away from the mainstream sports for the first time in this series. Last time we had uh, Andy Campbell on, who was a brilliant guest we love speaking to. Uh, lots of you would have would have heard of Andy Campbell, but uh, I, th- I think this this name will be less, less certainly less well known within the city, won't it, mate? A little bit, just a tad. I wouldn't think people will know this team's names. No, it, it, indeed, not only the the person who we've got on, but the team. Lots, lots of you. Well, I I'd say there's any sports enthusiast in Cardiff will have heard of Cardiff City. I'd be very surprised if you've managed to avoid that. However, uh, this team, a uh, bit more niche. So as I said, it's a less well known sport. Uh, we've got baseball, haven't we? We do have baseball, which was surprising to find in Cardiff. I'm not going to lie. Didn't realise there was a baseball team in Cardiff, so I don't know about you. No, I didn't. I, I, I imagine, like, we played rounders in school, didn't we? We've played all softball and that sort of thing. But to find out that there was a club was was, was a little surprising. On, on on our doorstep, I mean, right between where both of us live, really. How much do you know about baseball? That's a very good question, to be honest. Um, not Not a lot, really. Just... Just probably the main, uh, the rules. I would probably, I would probably could tell you like three teams. I'm not going to lie. I would profess to be a Toronto Blue Jays fan. And that's simply down to the fact my mum went to Toronto and brought me back a hat of the baseball team when she went to see a game. And she she was messaging me when she was at the game asking me the rules. And obviously at my, I, I get the concept. It's sort of a diamond. You hit it. The, you've got to get around the bases without the ball being caught or you being run out, the, the whole foul ball strikes, it gets a little bit more hazy for me. I think we, we sport would, would constitute the vast majority of the UK's understanding of the game of baseball. And if you've ever played that game, if, you, if, you, if you're the pitching team, I don't know if you know this, this is a wee sport tip for you. If you hold an A and B as you throw the ball, it throws what's called a splitter. Don't know what that means in actual American baseball. Is that, is that when the ball goes really slow? It goes really like slow and it just falls. And the, <laughs> the guy batting <laughs> has got absolutely no chance of hitting it anywhere. And if you do hit it, it goes about two foot. And then, I don't know, what what's the guy behind the batter called in baseball? Um, We've we got a lot to learn on wiki. this one. Well, it's not the wiki keeper, is it? That's, <laughs> that's us being all, all backstop. No. We, should, we, should, we should know this. I think this is why we wanted to to get into baseball, as we've just demonstrated. We know uh, next to nothing between the two of us about it. And if you've ever watched it on TV, it's how I got into American football, which I guess we'll touch on later on. But if you watch it on the TV and you think, I'd love to get that a go, then this is a perfect opportunity. I mean, Richard uh, Sugarman, who's the gentleman who we uh, we are speaking to today, I mean, couldn't have been nicer and, and has welcomed us both down. It's a sport which anyone can really try. I, he has said, doesn't he, as long as you can throw a ball and catch a ball. Uh, throw a ball, catch a ball and hit it. <laughs> or hit hit the ball, then you've got a chance. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not overly more technical a sport than that. So um, so we did a bit of research, didn't we? We discovered that Cardiff has this team. It's called the Cardiff Merlins. Um, and we got in contact uh, with them. To speak to uh, Richard Sugarman, who's one of their players, one of their coaches, uh, runs their social media channels as well. Um, and we uh, we asked him where his love of this American sport, baseball, first came from. I've always been interested in baseball. I've always liked it. Um, as a kid, I was lucky. My dad worked for British Airways. So all our holidays, you know, growing up from you know, five up until so I, was, I was 18, um, all was spent over in America. So... So for the summers, I just I just grew up watching it and I got into it in that way. So this always always oh. carried on, you know, ever since. And which team did you choose? It was the New York Mets. The Mets. Well, it first started showing over here, uh, probably about eighty five, eighty six. 
So, um, obviously, jumping on the bandwagon because the Mets won the World Series in, it, in 86, obviously, this yeah. is a great team. So, I'll support them. And ever since then, they've been pretty much rubbish. But yeah. you still you still can stick with the team you first that's got into. Oh, yeah. oh, of course. How how many games did you get to go see? I've only actually I've only ever, ever actually seen one game. Um, that was back over it. That was back in uh, September two thousand. Uh, we played the uh, St Louis Cardinals. That was a really good. That was a really good Sunday afternoon. A few of us and we visited a friend of ours who, who was living over in New York at the time. So we all sat in the park. Um, I was explaining the rules to everybody. I was getting looks from all these Americans going, British? How do you know about baseball? <laughs> so it's just, uh, it, it was a great conversation with them all. Yeah. But obviously now with the uh, MLB London series. Yeah. Started off last year with the Red Sox. Um, it's supposed to be this year. It's supposed to be the Chicago Cubs and the uh, St. Louis Cardinals, obviously. That's been postponed, but obviously that's attracting a you know a whole new audience, and it's bringing the baseball community together in a massive way. So obviously you you said uh, to me, if I'm not mistaken, you're the, you, you're a coach for for the for the Merlins now in Cardiff. Yeah, you seem to have a lot of roles there. You were saying. Yeah, it's it's, it's like any any small team, you know, any any club team, so sort of, everybody chips in and does. Does wherever you can. So I'm a part of the um, I'm a part of the committee. Do a, do a little bit of coaching. Um, obviously, I play as well. I'm the, uh, I'm, the I'm the first base amongst amongst other positions. But uh, yeah, so everybody chips in and, and does and does whatever need is. You know, it's pretty much like any five a side football team, cricket team, anything like that. So how did that come all come about then? Do you just get like a group of friends and thought let's start this baseball team up? I joined in after it had been set up. Um, Basically, it was set up. There's a there's a huge softball following in in Cardiff. You've got a punk and a few other Saturday and Sunday. It was full of people playing playing softball. So so a couple of guys, obviously into baseball, but with no outlet for it. Yeah, they were playing softball. Um, one of the guys was playing uh, baseball for a team over in Bristol. Um, so they just they just got together and they uh, they started it off probably uh, 2017. Um, 2018. That's when they sort of started putting the uh, call out uh, for more players. That was in the January 2018. That's when I jumped on. So they do an indoor training. So then 2018, we just spent the time recruiting new players, training, um, playing friendlies against existing teams in the southwest, and then we applied to join what's called the Southwest Baseball League. So this is basically it's teams. Well, now it's teams from us all the way down the M5 corridor down to Plymouth. What was the reception like? It was sort of how many players did you get interested when when there was that you said you talked about the call out? How much interest was there? It was surprisingly it was a lot of it was a lot of interest um, virtually from the from the get go. So we had we had a lot of a lot of new players sort of over over the winter. Obviously, more as we got into the summer. And for that first year, you know, we had probably about a good core of about you know, twenty to thirty players. Lots have played softball before. Um, you know, a few have played in cricket, and so sort of they had a passing interest in the game as a new sport. And they, yeah, they jumped on, and uh, a lot of them are stuck with it. And that Southwest League that you said you play in, how, how competitive is that? Because I saw, I, I did a look. There's sort of a Bristol team, isn't there? As you said, there's one in Plymouth. I think Yeovil, yeah. maybe. Yeovil, yeah, basically there's three in Bristol, um, Western Supermare, Taunton, Yeovil, Newton Abbott, Exeter, Plymouth. Uh, it's very competitive. It, there's, a, you know, there's a there's a good quality players there. Some of the teams they've got players who played for the GB national team. Oh, wow. So they are they are very good. You know, on, on the UK level, they're very good. But yeah, it's all you know, it's competitive because the teams are pretty much all at the same. All at the same level, you know the games are really close. Um, you can't really tell who's going to win week in, week in, week out. I uh, guess that makes it more fun to play in. All the games are high, are high scoring. Um, yeah, and they're just you know, it's really competitive and close. You mentioned as well to me that you play the MLB rules, don't you? you, yeah. you I mean, I don't know how much of an interest you had. I guess growing up, 
because baseball was always a sport in Wales until I guess. Oh, Wales, yeah. Going back to the what, 50s, 60s, 70s, it was the you know summer sport in Wales. You know the Welsh rugby players in their off season they all turned to baseball. In school, that's you played Welsh Welsh baseball with it. The triangular bats and the poles. So I think everybody grew up, you know, my generation growing up in the eighties. Um, that was your summer sport. Obviously, it's, it's some died off quite considerably over the years. I think it's been replaced more and more by softball. But now, obviously, we're the first competitive baseball team in Wales. Also, there's a, a youth baseball organisation started up as well called RBI Wales. Actually, they're they're the first of its kind in the UK because they're actually backed by. American baseball. Oh wow! A really good coup for Cardiff to get that. They took a team of girls uh, up to the national trials a few months ago, obviously before the lockdown started. Yeah, yeah. And three of the girls from that have been have been chosen to try out for the GB national team. That's so, amazing. Why do you think it dropped off? I know you said that sort of people were playing softball. Why do you think there was that? I think it was 2015 was the first time in something like 70 years there wasn't a Wales England game in baseball. And yeah, because obviously so many likes the sport. It, it, I mean, now it's great to see it coming back, and maybe it's due to the schools not not teaching it, and sort of that and that generation who you know, did play it. Obviously, they and they stopped, and because they stopped playing it in schools, maybe they, you know, it was replaced by cricket, hockey, other type of sports, athletics. Um, it just it just fell out of favour, and that, obviously that that new generation just just didn't come through. And where did the name Merlins come from? few things. One, there's a baseball team called the Miami Marlins. We thought when people are searching for Marlins, they might think Merlins. <laughs> it's a small bird of prey, it is. Um, that's obviously, we wanted something a little bit cool, a little bit different. And uh, yeah, you came with Merlins. It's disappointing, as you say, that it's gone away. But the sort of rise of American sports over here, I guess, it, especially in, in recent years, has been huge, not just baseball, but they had the NFL games in London. Yeah. And the NBA games, I know there was one in London last year and one in Paris, I think. Do you think that's sort of why it's spread out, I, I guess, the resurgence of the sport? Is it to do with these these companies, you know, like the NFL, putting their games in London, in Twickenham? It's definitely the uh, the appetite for it. You know, you, you just look on Twitter for the amount of UK baseball fans that, that are on Twitter, on, on Facebook, and the, and the groups, you know, there's MLB meetups in London. Um, Every year, as a bar called Belushi's in London, they have they have regular meetups where fans from all over the country they you know they they meet up there, you know, they watch games on a Sunday. You know, yes, it's a brilliant atmosphere. You just have the ice hockey in Cardiff. So, I mean, I've massively got into that recently with the Devils. It's become one of my big passions. It's, it's a great atmosphere down there, isn't it? Yeah. And do you get many people? I mean, obviously, it's very low low level. You were saying it's the first team, but do you get? I mean, do you get friends and family coming down to watch you play? So yeah, we get friends, family. We play in Pontana Fields. Um, we're, we're at the bottom. It's sort of got our own little, own little field um, down, down the river end of Pontana Fields. So we always get you know a crowd of people walking by, stopping for a few minutes. Yeah, I think we had I think we had a crowd of one of the last games last year. I think we had a crowd of about twenty five. So <laughs> not selling big. tickets, no. So when you start when you play like when you train and stuff, like what's what's the pitch like? Given our own pitch down there, so they they mark the diamond out for the beginning of the year. They oh, okay. they uh, cut the grass. They they maintain the uh, the actual outline of the diamond. They've allowed us to build pitchers mound in the middle. Okay. Unfortunately, in the uh, storms earlier on the year, that all wash, washed away. So yeah, had to dig around and uh, beg for to steal money um, <laughs> to try and uh, re- rebuild it. But yeah, they basically they're, they they. They give us a field, and we can do. You know, we can turn it into a proper baseball diamond, um, and they'll we'll upkeep it. You know, with cut the grass and the uh, and the markings. I didn't realise it was there. Though. Yeah, it, it was their own idea. pitch. I think. I think that's why we wanted to talk to you because I think baseball, as I said right at the start, is such a big sport. But I don't think a lot of people in Cardiff even know that there's a team on their doorstep. <laughs> Try and get the message out as much as can. You know, like any any little team. But, but seeing that we are so unique, um, then it's, it's nice to be on, on places like this. We were on um, Cardiff FM 
yeah. against Cardiff FM last last year, doing the uh, doing the final couple of matches, just uh, you know, promoting ourselves. So it's uh, yeah. you know, it's really great to try and get as much interest as possible. You know, we've got a great youth following. I said the RBI Wales, they they managed to get out and, and get as many kids playing the sport, which is which is really good. But you know, getting you know adults adults playing as well. Yeah, you know, we at the moment if. At the beginning of the year, we were we were looking, so we've probably got enough players so we could run two teams. Out. Other teams try to be created in Newport and Swansea, but they've they've fallen by the side. You know, we we got players coming up, you know, from Swansea, the Valleys, Merthyr, uh, all the way down. Do you have many from Grangetown? Because obviously that was that was the sort of the hub of, of Cardiff baseball beforehand. Not really, no, no. I said it, it's um, we did have a few sort of initial inquiries. So, at the early days, but when we said no, we're the US version. It's yeah, like, oh, I don't really in that. We're Welsh baseball, and that's it. What's the difference then between the two? Uh, there are a few, a few subtle uh, differences, but you know, there's sort of as long as you can throw a ball and hit a ball, then you know, they basically both both the same. And if you, I mean, if there's anyone listening who who wants to get involved, who wanted to join, how how could they do that? We're on Facebook, um, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, just. Um, and could drop us a message. Obviously, things have stopped now. Of course. So, you know, as, as soon as we were about to start um, outdoor outdoor training, and basically the season was uh, called off, so we don't know when we're going to start again. Um, might be later on in the summer, July maybe. But um, yeah, but you know, we're always always taking interest. So, you know, just to drop us a message on on Facebook, get back to you, and we'll invite you along when. It's all up and running, and we don't. You don't have to have played the sport before. You know, it's just a bunch can throw a ball. That's <laughs> we should take it up <laughs> now. We should. We should. We should have a go. I think. <laughs> when we're allowed back out, uh, we invite you down and have a look at. Uh, Is it a, a good community yeah, yeah, spirit? Yeah. I guess with within the team, Is, are you all yeah. quite close knit group? Oh yeah, yeah. Because in a, yeah, really close knit group. You know, what's that group? There's always there's always stuff happening on that. Um, you know, it's. It's a it's a great mix of people. You know, we've got every you know we've got people from you know obviously Wales, we've got from Argentina, oh, Canada, right. Korea. So we got yes, yeah, everybody. So a whole mix of people, all different personalities. And yes, yeah, it's, 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 because we're all fans of a unique sport. That's you know, that's not you know in Cardiff. It's oh, not. Yeah, it's not big. Well, yeah, it brings everybody that a little bit closer together. Oh, I think it's a great idea. We we've decided uh, to. In the spirit of sort of lockdown and everyone's doing all these quizzes at the moment, uh, we've we've put together five questions for each of the guests that we're having on the show to sort oh, of okay. test their knowledge of the sport. Um, so we, we we had a former Cardiff City player, Andy Campbell, on last week. Uh, and yeah, this isn't a part of that. I'm going to listen to the rest of it now. He uh, he. If the quiz is at the end, you've got quite a tough act to follow. I have to be honest because he uh, he he has unbelievable knowledge of his time at the club. Um, my baseball knowledge isn't brilliant. Well, well, well I've, I've I've made some of the multiple choice because obviously my my baseball knowledge itself isn't brilliant either. Um, yeah. So I've I've tried to I had a little look through some questions and I thought I'd pick some out which I thought would give you a fighting chance uh, on, at least. What we got? So first one uh, we've got up. Um, who was the first major league player to have his number retired? I would have to say probably Jackie Robinson. And that was one of the multiple choice ones that I had online. And the answer was Lou Gehrig to number one. Lou Gehrig is my second one. Um, that was that was the first one. Which base is the most commonly stolen base? Oh, that's good. Third. Ah, it's second. Ah, that's what I said. <laughs> Didn't I? So what was the name of the baseball team, the minor league baseball team in The Simpsons? Are, are you a fan of The Simpsons? Oh, God, I know this one. The isotopes. The isotopes, yes. It's, it's very good. Um, Springfield isotopes. Um, number four, which of these famous criminals was also once a professional baseball player? Was it John Dillinger, Al Capone, or Ted Bundy? Ted Bundy. It was John Dillinger for that one. And the final one, uh, how many baseballs are typically used in a regular MLB game? Is it 10, 30, 50 or 100? 30. I, I was gobsmacked by this answer. It's it's 100 or more. They go, go. Through, 
it apparently once it's used once or twice, it's put in a bag and then used for practice and never used again. So every single baseball made for a professional game is only ever hit once or twice. Um, wow. I, I imagine that's not the case with the Merlins. No, we're uh, yeah. <laughs> One or two balls a game. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, Richard, thank you very much uh, for coming on. Uh, nah, we really appreciate it. We uh, we wish you all the best when when, as you say, when the season finally gets the chance to restart. Um, and I, I I'd love to pop down one day. So uh, yeah, same we'll, we'll, we'll definitely come down. <laughs> I'll give you a shout when you down. Amazing, that would be fantastic. Uh, thank you very much for coming on, and uh, we shall hopefully see you soon. Well, a big thanks to Richard for coming on, and and a very kind offer for us to go down. Uh, now, I think once this lockdown's over, day like today, beautiful day outside, it'd be great to head down to Pont Canna Fields and uh, give it a go, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, it'd be brilliant to be fair. Like, it'd be good to um, you know, to have a go at it and hopefully be decent at it. I think my position, which I found out, would be a catcher. I think that's the word you were looking for. I think that was the word. Oh, the person who stands behind the, I don't know, the hitter? Yeah, yeah is, the is the catcher. Batman. It's not batsman. Oh, it's, I think the terms we're overcomplicating it. If it's pitcher, <laughs> batter, and catcher, I mean, surely they're all catchers, isn't? It? I know. I know you can play short stop, which I think is position between base two and base three, which I get more technical then. But yeah. um, I remember. I'm not sure if you've seen this clip. There's a clip, and it's it's not from an American baseball league, but it looks quite popular. And I I, I don't know if this is right or wrong, but if I can find it, I'll put a link for it somewhere on social media. I think it's in Japan, and I could be wrong. Okay. Where the pitcher he throws, he throws this. Uh, it goes at a million miles an hour, and the the guy batting it makes a full on connection with it, and the pitcher it's sort of coming towards right back at him, and he ducks, spins his arm behind his head, and somehow makes the catch and runs another player out. And I just remember watching it in complete awe, oh, just going, "That is unreal." Like, you don't even have to know about the sport to know what he's just done is absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Um, and I've, I've always thought I'd be quite a good pitcher. I put this on our Twitter account in the week when we were chatting to the British Baseball Podcast. I, I've got a good aim, you know. I don't know if one translates to the other, but there's that amusement game you can play. I know they've got it in the in the cinema in, in Cardiff where there's loads of clowns and you've got to hit them and hit them down and if you do you win tokens we've done it haven't we in Tenby yeah we have uh, I, 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 I smashed that game I love that game I smashed that I was always good at coconut shy yeah but it's, do you have the power though so do you have to have the speed in there yeah and then if the Wii if the Wii baseball is anything to go by curveballs and pinballs oh wow there's a lot to learn as, as we touched upon right at the start I mean and, and, and in the podcast baseball yeah we we didn't know a lot about it, but the research we did learn showed us that it was a big sport. And, and Richard was saying that it was the summer sport of Wales for, for decades in the 60s, 70s and 80s. And interesting to hear him say that the Welsh rugby team would, would yeah, do that as their like summer sport. It. Yeah, so, I mean, it's sad that it's, it's sort of disappeared. Um, a bit of culture... With a sporting culture within Wales, obviously it's not a sport which people of our generation, necessarily younger folk, would millennials, I guess they're called nowadays, aren't we? Yeah. Um, a sport that we would necessarily associate with Wales, but yeah, I think cool. it's brilliant what they're doing. It always makes me yeah. laugh that in the Americans call the the final of the baseball, so like the basketball finals is the NBA finals, Super Bowl would be the American football. It's called the World Series in the MLB, MLB yeah. as if any other country has taken part. <laughs> the World Series of baseball, but you can only enter if you're from this this tiny region of the world. Um, it's always made me laugh. Never know. One day the uh, the Merlins could be could have players representing GB going over. That would be amazing. Oh, that would be brilliant. And um, we do we do wish them all the best. And hopefully, I mean, the rise of Sports over here, as once again Richard touched upon, talks about the, the MLB series over here, which unfortunately yeah. looks like it's postponed this year, um, what with everything going on. But the NFL has taken off big time. I, I watch it every Sunday now. I, I, yeah. I've become massively obsessed with it. 
Do you have a team in any of them? I think you've watched the basketball, haven't you? NBA's Washington Wizards. The Wizards, that's right. Yes, and the only reason why I did that was, it must have been about eight years ago, maybe? I just, everyone, I think everyone my mates were supporting teams. It was like, you know, the Lakers and the Heat. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to find the worst team at the time, bottom. I mean, they've been better, I would I would say. That's they've got better now. Yeah. Like, Have you got an American football team? Raiders. Oh, the Oakland Raiders. Oh, so yeah, the Oakland Raiders. Big yeah, rivals to my team, divisional rivals. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to lie. Uh, that was just because I used to play as them all the time on NFL Street. Oh, right, okay. And I saw Street was the game, and I just always play as the Oakland Raiders. Do you ever have Madden? Uh, I've no, I did, never. I don't think I ever played like a, I only played like one or two games over like a mate's house, but that was it. First time I ever played that, and it was when I was starting to get into American sports. There was a gent who um, who I worked with at the bar in Cardiff called Dan, um, really nice guy, and he uh, we went for a couple of drinks over his house after work, and he said, "Oh, you have to get into American football." And I can't remember what the teams were. I'd never played Madden before. And he was like, I'll pick an easy team just to give you a chance. And I remember winning. And I've still got a photo somewhere on my phone of his face of absolute, just abject misery <laughs> that he hadn't won. And I, I don't know if it's still the case because that was lots of Madden's go. But if you just ran screenplays in American football on this game, they, they you couldn't defend them. Um, the defence would struggle against that. And I, so I just kept doing it. Probably not the... Yeah, not the most sportsmanlike way of playing the game, but, you know, a win's a win. Well, as we said already, thank you very much, Richard, for coming on. In the next few weeks, we've got um, we've got some exciting sports, exciting guests lined up, some from niche sports, more, more niche than baseball. Uh, baseball, most people would have heard of. This one we've got uh, is even more niche than that. We're still hoping to get athletics and, of course, the ice hockey. I know there's lots of Devils fans who've, We've already got in touch. Uh, looking forward to that. So we've got all this exciting lined up, which I'm looking forward to. I hope you are as well, mate. All right, mate. I'm looking forward to speaking to all these people and this, all these different types of sports and learning about them. So can't wait for it. Absolutely. And we, we still need to brush up our baseball as, as this last half hour or so was made made perfectly clear to anyone listening. Not to over-promo once again, but we are on Twitter. We are on Facebook. We're on you can listen now on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, or on Deezer. All of those are connected through our Audio Boom accounts. If you want to go straight to the source, you can go on Audio Boom. All of them is just simply at Capital Conf Lab. Uh, and we do put everything on YouTube. We try to put our interviews and some previews for the episodes up on there. So get in touch. And thanks for listening to Capital Conf Lab. Thank you for listening to the latest episode of Capital Comp Club. If you have a story you want featured, then get in touch. But for now, until next time, you've been listening to Capital Comp Club.